Hi, Thursday. My name is Gabby, and I am a master NLP practitioner, a law of assumption coach, an EFT coach, and I'm here at Create Your Future to help you dive every week deep into the law of assumption to figure out how to make it work best for you. So we do have a couple of really great offerings that are going on right now. We're offering a free course on how to identify and get rid of your blocks. You can find that information in the description box below. Also, I am currently offering $50 coupon code off of all of my courses and my meditations. You can find that information in the description box below. You can also use that coupon code. It is Gabby, that is G-A-B as in boy, I, 50, the number 50 G Y M as in Mary. So forget your manifestations. So Gabby 50 G Y M get your manifestations. That is the code for $50 off my courses and my meditations. Okay. Let's dig into this week's video topic. So I had a subscriber specifically reach out and ask a question around manifesting on a time crunch. And does that mean that you need to take action? If so, or do you continue just living in the wish fulfilled? So let's turn to Neville to see what Neville says specifically about this topic. So Neville shares, and this is my translation and summary of it. So I just want to let you guys know that. So the quantum soup multiverse, the vending machine, where we go and really pick out our desires, contains all possibilities of everything now and here in your present moment. So in other words, what Neville teaches, what all other law of assumption, philosophers, quantum physics scientists teach, is that it is a scientific fact that all possibilities exist simultaneously which means your desire exists right now in the here and the now. It's just a matter of you willing it into being. Does that mean you have to take action? Not necessarily. Now, there is a difference between inspired action and taking action in order to manipulate or control your 3D to have your desire come to you. Inspired action oftentimes just happens. You have inspiration you complete the action, it leads to the unfolding of your manifestation. And then when you look back as everything had unfolded, you're like, hmm, that is what led to this, which led to this, which led to this. In the moment, you are not consciously thinking, if I do this, then this will happen. I often tell my clients that if you have to think about it, and if you have to wonder, should I or shouldn't I, the answer is no, because that is not inspired action. Inspired action just happens. And oftentimes you don't think about it. You don't even realize you've done it. Okay. That is tip number one. Now let's talk about when you have that desire, especially on a time crunch. So you're going to will it into being, you're going to intend it into being. Now this is what Neville says. You intend it wholeheartedly, clearly in a focused way and with certainty. Simple intention is enough. Okay. He goes on to talk about intention through prayer. So he basically says, your intention will take form in the most unexpected and miraculous ways. This is always through incessant, cease, incessant prayer. So praying without ceasing. And then this is, we're going to dive into his lectures here. Praying without ceasing is going through the whole day, every day with focused attention for all your life's desires with certainty and gratitude. You don't do this just once at a special time during the day and that totally different and remain confused the rest of the day. This is a lifestyle. A prayer is meant to be active, ever present and part of your normal wakefulness. It is your creative power. It wills your desire into action. It is self-assertive. It is not periodic. It is not passive. It is not helpless. And it is not emotional appeal. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Yet before you ask, it is given unto you. Be self-assertive, ever-present, and grateful. Intend to receive it. Don't beg to have it. 
He goes on to say, if you use clear inten intention, certainty, and gratitude, you must have certainty. You must know you have this power and you must trust that this power aligns for you. There is no criterion by which this power wills or does not will manifestations into your reality. The law applies to all unequal, all equally and unfailingly. Prayer or intention is an inward energetic process, a call you give out with a detached expectation of an answer without a shred of a doubt. It is strong and certain will. When you realize that even the request is unnecessary, that you are one, you are the one power, whatever it is you request or wish to have, and simultaneously you are the grantor of that wish, then you will be praying and receiving without fail. For your prayers will be of pure gratitude, and what is already given unto you even before you ask, the request is not necessary. Okay, so let's break that down. So I'm going to go back and just talk a little bit about, first of all, prayer. Prayer in Neville's word is intention. It really is. It's intention, right? So if you're intending wholeheartedly, clearly, in a very focused way and with certainty, this is what Neville talks about buying the pearl. You are going all in. You are not holding on to any, any sense of doubt, any sense of confusion, any unclear thoughts. You are knowing that because you are intending one, and because you have the desire two, and because you are a conscious creator three, it must show up. It must, no matter the circumstances or the 3D conditions. Now, the subscriber that asked this question specifically was asking about a time crunch. And you're probably sitting here going, okay, Gabby, this is all great. I know Neville. I know I'm supposed to intend. I know I'm supposed to really buy the pearl. But what about a time crunch in that 3D world? A time crunch or a deadline or our perceived notion of that is literally a circumstance. It's a 3D condition. It is a condition that we have imposed upon ourselves because we have agreed in the moment we say there is a timeline, there is a deadline, there is a time crunch on this. We have said, okay, we are choosing to believe that man's construct of the measurement between experience to experience, what we call time, is real. Time is made up. It's an illusion. It is literally something that men in the, in the species of <laughs> the world, right? Man as a species is using and has constructed and designed in order to measure experience between experience. Yesterday I had this, today I've done this. It's literally to measure our experiences, to track them, okay? And so it is up to you to either accept those 3D conditions of time as true or to say, I don't accept those as true. Time doesn't exist. It's an illusion. It is something that is literally held into this 3D world. And how do you know that? How do you know it's only in the 3D world? Well, let's take a look at quantum physics. Quantum physics, scientists have even said, time doesn't exist. Time doesn't exist. Literally, they measure time completely different than humans humans measure time, right? They measure time from the travel of light, right? That's how they measure it, okay? Light speed, basically, okay? It is not real. The definition of time is not real. And time changes no matter where you are, okay? You're probably sitting here going, okay, Gabby, that sounds very woo-woo. Let me give you some logic here, okay? It takes the earth 365-ish days to go around the sun, which means one year, okay? Now, let's think about this. Jupiter, it takes almost 12 to 20 times longer to go around the sun because it's further away. 
So one year for us on Earth is very different than one year on Jupiter. How can that be? We're in the same solar system. So you're going to say, well, it's further away from the sun. We measure time as going around the sun. And so that's what we're going to do, right? That's how it's, that's how it's different. Okay. But why? Ask yourself that. Why? Why is that different? Why does it have to be different? Why are we saying, oh, well, because we went around the sun an entire time around the sun, right? The earth went all the way around the sun. That's one year. Why do we have to measure it that way? We decide it. We decided and we accepted that as true. We accepted that as that is what the measurement of time is, okay? We accepted that the measurement of time is roughly 23 and three quarter hours per day, right? Okay, but here's something interesting. On the Southern Hemisphere, the measurement of time may be the same, but the daylight is different than the night time, right? Than the Northern Hemisphere. The seasons are different, right? In December, it's sunny and hot there, whereas in the Northern Hemisphere, typically in December, it's cooler, sometimes wetter, snowier, rainier, depending upon where you are, okay? So again, this is a construct that we as a human race, a human condition, living that human experience have created. So we don't have to abide by that, right? People who make laws, they change laws all the time. Same thing with us. We're seeing that as an old law, an old rule. You don't have to abide by that. Because you might be saying, okay, Gabby, I get this, but what does that have to do with me? Well, let me just tell you, I have been working with a client now for quite some time, and she has been having a ton of fun with the law of assumption. She's been playing with it. She's been calling things into her life that really are making her happy and filled with glee and joy. And one of the things that she has been working on is being very specific with her manifestations with her SP. Okay. The two things that she wanted this year was to be contacted on Valentine's Day and on her birthday by her SP. She didn't want to have to do the work. She did not want to have to do the work. Now, let me put this out here. These are considered timelines. These are time crunches, right? Two days before Valentine's Day, we were talking. She was kind of on edge and nervous. She was like, oh my gosh, like it's coming up. I really want to hear from him. I didn't hear from him last year. I want to hear from him this year on Valentine's Day. And there was that anxiousness there around, hey, here's a deadline. Here's a time crunch coming up. And we just went back to the basics, intending, knowing with certainty her power and her ability to be able to call that into her realm, into her world, right? And guess what happened? On Valentine's Day, she heard from her SP. Same thing happened for her birthday. I just talked to her recently, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, and we were kind of up against the same thing. She was like, okay, Gabby, I did it for Valentine's Day, but I really want to do it for my birthday. I don't want to have to lift a finger. I want this to happen. I want this to be natural and organic. And I want to hear from him. I didn't hear from him last year. I've never heard from him actually on my birthday. They've known each other for a while. Um, and I was like, okay, well, let's get back to basics again, right? How do you create and manifest anything into your world? You intend. So she's been intending. For her process, she affirms using the technique of who am I being right now? Who am I right now? In this moment right now, who am I? And she started telling herself, I am the person now who's receiving a text message for my birthday from my SP. I am that person. I am chased after. I am valued. I'm honored. I'm respected. And guess what? She sent in a success story. She heard from her SP for the first time since they've known each other, which I believe has been a little more than, I think it's over three years now. First time that she's gotten a text message from her SP. Now, some of you may be in a different place in your journey. Some of you may be saying, oh, that's a really small deal. Some of you may be saying that's huge, right? For her, this is what she wanted, okay? She has been really focused on mastering her ability with the law, her ability to have people conform immediately, her ability to have everyone you pushed out be shown back to her. She has done a ton of work around 
having people parrot back her thoughts. She's done a ton of work around having people show up in different outfits. She's done a ton of work around being very specific with her manifestations. And so this for her was exactly what she desired and wanted. And that is the essence of intending with certainty, knowing your power, knowing that you are a conscious creator, holding steadfast without doubt to that and allowing it to come into your reality. So let's go back to that original subscriber's question. Do you need to create action? Do you need to do anything? Or can you just continue to live in the wish fulfilled? You can just continue to live in the wish fulfilled. You can do inspired action. I always ask, and I'll pose this to you, and I want you to comment down below if you've ever, if you've ever felt oh, this could be inspired action. But then as you thought through it with this question, you realized it was not inspired action. So comment down below or give me a thumbs up um, with the like button. But have you ever thought, I want to do this. Should I do this? I want to text this person. Should I text this person? I want to call this person. Should I call this person? I want to hear from this person. So maybe I should post something on social media. Have you ever thought any of those thoughts? So comment down below, yes, if you've thought those thoughts. And then I wanna tell you something, if you've thought those thoughts and then you followed through with it, it's not inspired action, okay? Have you ever thought, you know what, it's SP's birthday, forget it, I'm just gonna go ahead and send a message. I don't care if I hear back. You send a message, you go about your day, you don't even check your phone, right? And then the next day you've got a response that is more likely to be inspired action than if you were to sit there and say, should I message that person? Should I call that person? Well, it's their birthday. Should I have done something? Okay. If you were thinking all of those things, that is just you manipulating the 3D because you want contact, right? So it's really about being present in your moment and inspired action will show up afterwards as this was inspired action. You'll look back and realize, oh, that was totally inspired action because I didn't care. I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't focusing. And then this showed up. Okay. So I hope that answers your question, subscriber. Um, for all of you who are watching, thank you so much. If you are looking for some one-on-one -on -one help um, and you really want some individualized coaching so that we can manifest the life of your dreams, please feel free to book a session with me. Go ahead and find that in the description box below. I love working with you all. And as always, have a wonderful rest of your Thursday and I'll see you next week. Bye.